Earlier in this course, I talked about how you can version the code for your services. And we, at that time, I also talked about you might be updating the protocol that your services use between version one and version two. And I talked about this thing called a two-phase update in order to make that happen. Well, a similar thing has to happen when you are versioning data schemas, not just wire protocols, but now data schemas. But let's talk about that. Well, when you are creating a database that you're going to be storing data into, you want to use a formal programming language agnostic data schema. You might be putting your data into this database using some language like Java, and you might pull the data out of there using Node.js, for example. So you want to make sure that you are using some kind of programming language agnostic data scheme. Even if you think today that all your services are written in Java, and you, that's what you think you're going to do for the rest of time, data tends to be very sticky and last for many, many, many years. Right? No company ever says, well, some of these customers are 10 years old. Uh, we're willing to throw away our 10-year customer database and start over from scratch. Right? It doesn't make any sense. So you really want to think about your data schemas and versioning them again from version one. The data is the truth, not the programming language data type. Again, this is a common scenario or pit of failure that I see a lot of people get into. They design their data schemas using their programming language of choice. Well, I'm a C Sharp developer, so I'm going to create a class called employee. And inside there, I'll have a string for the name, and I'll have a date time for when the person started at the company, and I'll have you know, a few other fields in there. And then I will just simply serialize that, and I will write that out to a data stored service. That is pretty much guaranteed to fail you sometime in the future. It may work great initially, but sometime in the future, you might say, oh, I don't want to use .NET anymore. I want to rewrite my service in some other language. Well, in .NET, date time could never be null. It has a certain format and some other language. It might look like something different. And now you might have a very hard time getting access to that data ever again. So if you really care about your data, and everybody does, use a formal programming language agnostic data schema to save that data so you can get back to it later on. And make sure that the programming language that you are working with doesn't uh, overly influence this design of the data schema. All data must specify a version information starting with version one. Right? So you might want to embed some version number information, or you should embed some version number information into the data when you write it out into the database. Uh, of course, new services, so that is new versions of a service, must be infinitely backward compatible. And this is really important. So. Let's say today you build a service and you write some employee information out into a database. And then next year you decide you want to store some additional information about an employee that you never stored before. Well, now you're going to be writing new version two employee objects into a database that has this new information in it. And then maybe next year you're writing version three that has some more information in it. Um, so maybe you had an employee, though, that works at your company for 10, 20 years, and all of a sudden you need to go and look up something about that employee that you haven't need to look up in a long time. Well, you wrote them into that database in version one 10 years ago. You better be able to go get that information back out. So you have to be infinitely backward compatible to the beginning of time in order to read old schemas. You either have to do that, or when you update to a new schema, you have to walk through every record in your database and bring it up, migrate it from old to the current schema. Um, but that can be a very time consuming thing to do, especially if we're talking about massive scale with tens or hundreds of millions of items inside a database. Uh, okay, so as I say, service version one might create an entry that isn't accessed for many, many years. But then you do decide to access it, you need to be able to read it and understand it. If you're doing rolling updates, then you have version one and version two instances running together. You do not want to have a version two instance right into the database with a v2 schema, and then a request comes into a version one uh, instance, and it tries to read it out. 
because the version 1 instance won't be able to read the thing that was written in the version 2 schema. Um, this is very similar to what I talked about in the, um, earlier in the course about updating network protocols. This is a similar situation right over here. So as I say, failure occurs if the v2 instance writes v2 data schema and the v1 instance tries to go and read it. So how do we resolve this issue of handling these schema changes? Well, you can fix this by performing what's called, again, a, a two-phase update. But now we're doing the two-phase update on data schemas as opposed to network protocols. And here's the two phases. The first phase is you deploy the version 2 service instances. And of course, the v2 service, since it is backward compatible, it can read from the database v1 objects and v2 objects. And because you store the version number in the object itself, it knows when it reads something from the database, oh, this is a v1 object or this is a v2 object. Now, when you're just deploying v2 instances right now into the cluster, everything in the database will be a v1 object. So the v2 uh, instances will read v1 objects, and they mo if they modify it, they have to write back v1 objects, right? They still have to use the version 1 data schema. They're not allowed to write using the version 2 schema yet. After all of the instances in the cluster are updated to be version 2 instances, now you can go and do a reconfiguration, so gracefully bring services down, change an environment variable to flip on which data schema you want the instances to use, and then bring up the v2 of your code again. And now with the reconfiguration in place, the code can now read v1 schemas, modify them, and write them back out as v2 schemas now. Or maybe just new records that get created are written out as v2 schemas, right? That's up to you what you want to do. But you can only start writing v2 schemas only after you know that all instances running can handle these version 2 schemas.